the job of government is to meet the everyday needs, demands, hopes and expectations of our people. And ladies and gentlemen, those people are right here and right here in Northern Ireland and nowhere else. <clears throat> and let us look at some of those policies, ladies and gentlemen. Let us remind ourselves what the Ulster Unionist Party have committed to. We have committed to a fair post-primary education transfer system that gives the best opportunity to all our young people and ensure that we end the era whereby many leave school without even the bare essentials of being able to read and write. A single education authority that doesn't allow individual education bodies to have their own powers. A health service that will meet the needs of the community and one which is free at the point of delivery for everyone in this society. An economy that is driven by an inventive private sector and produces efficiencies within the public sector. But also, ladies and gentlemen, let us remind ourselves of what the Ulster Unionist Party has done. The Ulster Unionist Party saved the Northern Ireland taxpayer approximately £88 million by prescribing generic brand drugs. The Ulster Unionist Party provided free prescriptions for everyone. And the Ulster Unionist Party put £53 million back into frontline health services by completing the review of public administration in the health service and reducing the number of health and social care bodies from 38 to 17, all under the auspices of the Ulster Unionist Party Minister, Michael Majimsey. <clears throat> but fellow unionists, don't just think that was it all. We led on the progress of the devolution of corporation tax varying powers, we led on the campaign to reduce air passenger duty from £60 to £12 on transatlantic flights. We delivered on our promise not to introduce the Sinn Féin commitment of town centre car parking charges in 30 towns throughout Northern Ireland. And we, the Ulster Unionist Party, delivered on our commitment to ensure a fair solution for the Presbyterian Mutual Society savers and investors. And ladies and gentlemen, just remind ourselves of what the Ulster Unionist Party didn't do. We didn't bring forward proposals for a terrorist shrine at the former Mayor's prison site. <clears throat> the Ulster Unionist Party didn't bring forward the 11 council model that will enshrine a nationalist and republican majority in our capital city of Belfast. The Ulster Unionist Party hasn't overseen the increase to the highest unemployment rates in Northern Ireland for over 13 years. And I can tell you the Ulster Unionist Party didn't close accident and emergency services at Ligon Valley in the city hospitals, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> the Ulster Unionist Party will fight for what is right for everyone in Northern Ireland. And now that the review of the Justice Minister appointment process is fast approaching, and it is due in May 2012, there is a perfect opportunity to streamline and develop a much more efficient Northern Ireland government. All parties have said that they want to reduce the level of government structures at Stormont. Well, I say here today, ladies and gentlemen from the Ulster Unionist Party, now is your chance. And you will not find us wanting in that. With the ongoing review, we have now time to reduce the current number of government departments from 12 to, let's say, at least eight. That is a reduction of a third of that administration right at the heart of the executive. And I now challenge others, ladies and gentlemen, to follow the lead of the Ulster Unionist Party. Let's cut that burden on the taxpayers, make ourselves more efficient, and give the public value for their money. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot let this occasion pass without mentioning the outgoing President of the Republic of Ireland, Mary Magalise. And we do come from very different ends of the political spectrum. We have different beliefs and loyalties, and obviously we have very different opinions on many issues. 
But the one thing that we do share as an inherent belief in the goodness of people, we also have a commitment to build bridges which are sturdy structures based on mutual respect and not founded on meaningless words and phrases. And as she prepares to leave office, I wish to acknowledge the contribution that she has made during her 14 years in office. And ladies and gentlemen, I never did get to one of her 12th of July celebrations <laughs> in her official residence of Phoenix Park, because I always seem to be walking somewhere else. But I am told that they were great occasions for the hundreds who were there. So the initiatives taken by President McAleese, I trust have helped to create better understanding and I wish her well and her family for the future. Thank <clears throat> you.